Sometimes I feel like the only thing that might be more popular than a man talking about how to write women on the internet is a white man talking about how to write black people on the internet. And if that statement has suddenly, inexplicably caused you to start writing a comment about how the race of a writer doesn't matter as long as the character is well written, then you are the person that I'm trying to talk to in this video. And if you sit on the other end of the political spectrum from those commenters, I think you probably also have a few assumptions about the points that I'm about to make about black people and how to write them on Black History Month, no less. Stuff like, ah, oh, forced diversity is bad, or token black people are bad, or why can't black people just make their own characters, or even the classic, stop forcing Japanese people to make black people an anime girl. And while I might discuss those topics, I also feel it's not exactly what I would like to get to with this video. I think I have a different perspective than most people when it comes to this topic. Although, I think it's also one which most people can end up agreeing with one way or another, regardless of what you believe. My goal with this video isn't to show how woke I am, or how cool and based I am. It's mainly just to write good characters and help other people to do the same. Because even if I do care about politics to a certain degree, the truth of the matter is that politics will never help you write a good character, no matter how much you might want it to. I also think there are more than enough white critics on the internet telling black people how they should and should not write black characters, so much so that I'm sure black people are sick of being talked down to about it. Especially when the same critic shows that they don't really know a single thing about black people, or that they only look to black people as accessories to prove that they're not racist. The, I have a black friend or lover, therefore I am not racist type of people. Y you know the ones. I don't want to be the white guy with a strong opinion on what black people should and shouldn't do and how they should or shouldn't be written or how they should or shouldn't act in fiction because that's just not my goal with this video. And if you think that's a political statement, then shit dude, do you always bring down the vibes to every party you go to? So what's my actual goal with this video? Uh, my goal is to translate what I've learned from black people in my personal life to other writers like me with an interest in writing good characters of any walk of life, including black people. My perspective on this topic might inherently be incomplete, but I think I've at least given it an honest enough effort to speak on and share my notes about writing black people. So when I discuss this topic, I'm not really talking to black people. Black people probably already know how to write black people. Just draw from people in your real life, or from your own experiences. Boom, you're done. Go watch one of my other videos on screen right now. Uh, just click those videos, you know, maybe if you're not a woman, you could figure out how to write female characters. That video is pretty popular. I'm mainly talking to people who don't understand the black perspective. Writers and critics who might be well-intentioned, but just ignorant. People who are trying to put themselves in the shoes of someone else. Writing a character with experiences and perspectives which might be foreign to themselves, and doing so in a respectful way. I suppose I'm also talking to people who don't have good intentions and think they know everything about writing just because they can make some wild speculation or conspiracy theory about wokeism or whatever the fuck. And while I think my perspective is more useful than most you'll find on YouTube, I also think I've got plenty more to learn. I'm not here to pretend like I have the one true way of writing good characters, but I am here to share my notes and I think they'll be helpful to people who have an open mind. Firstly, my view on this topic is not something which has come about in isolation. I've discussed this topic around representation with quite a few of my friends, some of whom are black, and others who are just simply wanting to see well-written representatives for black people in their media. I also find that there are a lot of writers who find the need to justify themselves by saying, well, my black friends signed off on this opinion, so it must be fine. And in a way, I feel like that kind of paints black people with a broad brush. Sure, while our black friends might offer different perspectives which we can come to agree with, Black people, like any race, are not a monolith and therefore won't always agree on how best to represent themselves in media. Let it be known that even though I got critique on this video's script from black people, these opinions and thoughts are 100% my own. As cringe or based as they may or may not end up being, I take full responsibility for whatever I say in this video. And I would loathe the day any of my friends did not call me out on a bad take. 
There is a difference between using your black friends as a shield for potentially problematic opinions and getting feedback from your friends and trying to understand their perspectives on certain topics. My advice comes from me and what I believe. Sure, I can be convinced by a good argument from somebody else, but I don't see the point in attempting to cater towards any one particular group based solely on their skin color. However, in a video about representing black people, talking about and acknowledging skin color or the many problems people seem to have with it is completely unavoidable. When it comes to white people writing black people, there is nothing more annoying to me than someone with a savior complex talking over the very people they're trying to represent. I think this is a lot of what more conservative-leaning people will latch onto with their critiques. The truth is, no one likes it, especially black people. I think people can pick up on an author who is disingenuous or overly lionizing of black people. No one likes to be glazed up for things they did not accomplish because it feels condescending. Oh, you exist in America as a black person? You're so brave, dude. I mean, I've had people in my real life who try to get on my good side or on my friend's good side by glazing the fuck out of them and for things just as simple as like having having an opinion or just existing as a member of a certain group and every time it's just it just angers me i don't know how else to describe it whenever i get a compliment for nothing or someone says that they're proud of me for having something as innocuous as an opinion i can't help but get annoyed like you don't know me dude and i've done nothing to earn your praise so why are you really trying to praise me the movie Get Out has a good representation of this white liberal style of racism, telling us that black people are so cool because they can run faster, jump higher, and face racism and all this other stuff. The same type of people who will go out of their way to be friends with black people because they don't want to be viewed as racist, and yet even if these white people are complimenting and borderline worshipping black people, they still have not treated black people as people. And if you're the type of person doing that in real life, then I'm sorry to tell you this, but they know you're doing it. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen this happen in real life. A random white person coming up to one of my black friends and just being overly familiar with them. Like the kind of people who are trying so desperately to get invited to the cookout and it's like, bro, they, they don't know you. <laughs> they don't know you like that. And while I do believe anyone can code switch, I've seen some white people just completely invent their own language on the spot instead of just being normal. It's cringe and weird. Just be white, man. I mean, I guess doing what you're doing is already a pretty white thing to do, ironically enough. Now, what does all of this have to do with writing? And to bring it back to writing, my first piece of advice is to separate racism as a concept from black people as characters. I feel some writers often approach writing black people in the same way they might approach a black person in real life. That is to say, they're treating black people like concepts and victims rather than people or characters in their world. Not every black person is a star athlete, not every black person has faced systemic oppression or racism, nor do they need to in your story. Not every black person is culturally black, or from the ghetto, or speaks with an accent. Heck, not every black person needs to be a mouthpiece for racial politics or systemic oppression. And while that is in no way meant to dismiss or ignore the victimization and systemic violence minorities, including black people, face in our real world, it is an acknowledgement that not all black people have the same life experience, nor does your character need to be dragged down by those real world issues in a world that's not intended to replicate our own in the first place. Sometimes people just want to escape from the harsh realities of the real world and its history, and don't need a constant reminder of the systemic violence and oppression they and their ancestors have faced just for being born with a different skin color. Sometimes it's nice to just write about a world where skin color is as important to someone as the color of someone's eyes, meaning that it exists and people acknowledge that it exists and perhaps even find meaning in it, but that it does not come with any sort of positive or negative connotations. If racial conflict is not a part of the themes in your story, then you shouldn't introduce it the moment you add a black character to that story. Just let that character exist in your fiction as a person first, more than anything. For example, no one wants to play Dungeons and Dragons with the DM who makes their villains racist to black people just because one of their players is black. Yeah, we get it. Villains do villainous shit, but it's kinda awkward in the moment, and one has to question if racism was ever a trait that would have been given to the villain if there was not a black person in the room. 
And I don't think a DM in this scenario is trying to be racist to the black person. If anything, they might be trying to be the opposite by saying, ah, yes, I'm on your side. Villainous people are racist. But at the same time, bringing up racism whenever a black person is around you is, well, it's not racist, but it's it's kind of racially biased. If the only black characters you write are characters which need to act as an allegory or lesson about oppression and racism, I would question why that is. Perhaps it is well-intentioned, or perhaps it's an unavoidable topic for your setting, something which cannot simply be glossed over or ignored in your story. After all, if one were to do that in the wrong setting, we would also risk whitewashing those topics. If I'm writing about the American Civil War, or black historical figures, or even trying to depict a realistic setting of our modern day, then it would be disingenuous to pretend those things do not exist. It's not bad to depict racism in fiction either. It's not bad to write racist characters in fiction. But as a writer, it's also important to know that these uncomfortable topics should be handled with care, and they should probably exist with some sort of function or utility in the story as a whole. And if it serves no purpose to the narrative, then just get rid of it. If it's just spice and flavor for your setting, it doesn't need to be there. I would argue that in a high fantasy or sci-fi world or any setting which is not focused on racial issues, then who the fuck cares? Just like with gender, the race of a character is only one thing which can shape a character's personality and backstory. And if racism is a theme in your story, then it also does not always need to become an allegory for black oppression. We do not need more movies like Bright wherein the orcs are oppressed in ghettos and have a lot of black stereotypes, only for the writers to say, See guys, they're not black people, they can't play basketball, as if that somehow makes it better. But when it comes to black characters in particular, I have noticed that there are a lot of writers who are afraid to have their own opinion, let alone write something that does not inevitably circle back to acknowledging and depicting the oppression of black people in today's society. Writers will often see what other people do and copy it. That's just how writing is a lot of the time. There are no original ideas and everything is derivative of something else. That's how inspiration works. But for black characters especially, I find that non-black writers who don't want to appear racist will often try to play it safe and just do whatever other non-black writers are doing. The next advice I can give you if you're struggling to write black characters is to stay the fuck away from giving them lightning powers. For God's sakes, please give them any other sort of fucking power. Why do black people always get stuck with lightning powers? Where did this trope come from? Can we please do something different? Holy shit, it's everywhere. And if you don't believe that this is a trope, then name five black characters with superpowers that are not centered around lightning without using Google. Go on, I'm waiting. And if you can name five, then good job. There was no reward for your effort, but I reckon that didn't stop you from doing it to prove that exceptions exist and that you know a lot about black people. Almost too much. It's kind of weird. The point is that it's difficult in the first place, but I find I have to stop and make this argument because I know there are so many people who will constantly meet a lack of diverse representation with a list of exceptions as if to say, we have enough black people in media already, we don't need more. If me saying let's make more black superheroes without lightning powers has somehow sent you off into a tirade about how characters like Miles Morales and Static Shock are awesome, then you've missed the point. Those characters are great. They will always be great. That hasn't stopped writers from just copying those characters and playing it safe, though. It's when writers begin to check boxes on a page with their characters that their characters become poorly written. If writers are only ever going to go through the motions when creating their racially diverse casts, then those diverse casts can end up feeling the complete opposite. We need to ask ourselves why so many black characters have lightning powers in the first place if we seek to make conscious decisions about what we write. And don't even get me started about the amount of black characters with dread comb-overs these days. This has nothing to do with writing, and like, yeah, it looks cool, it's a cool hairstyle, but it's just bad character design to do what literally everyone else is doing. Switch it up a bit. Like, goddamn, we've got black characters out here looking about as diverse as isekai protagonists sometimes. As writers, when we make more diverse casts, 
we must also remember that diversity doesn't end at skin color alone. It also doesn't end at perceived culture, either. Perhaps some writers are too afraid to step out of the boundaries of what has been done before, and therefore will take inspiration from what little examples we can see. Or maybe writers just really liked the idea and didn't realize they were taking too much inspiration from one source. I mean, it's not racist to make all of your characters look and act the same as other people's characters, but it's definitely uninspired and it's definitely not good writing. Tropes exist for everything and everyone, not just black people, but for some reason, bringing up black tropes ignites a shitstorm debate about those topics. Every black person in media ends up being a streetwise gang member, or a person who escaped the hood and found a better life through education, or a mysterious magic janitor who has all the answers for our white main protagonist problems, or maybe the secret, hey, I'm not like other black people, black character. Beta! <laughs> And yes, there are plenty of well-written black characters who fit under these categories, but the thing about tropes is that tropes are not inherently bad. The only time tropes are bad is when the writer is ignorant to them, or does not understand them. As much as we may attempt to represent a certain race or culture, sometimes we end up fitting them into stereotypes instead. Sometimes a story for certain characters can be so compelling that other writers will replicate it without understanding why it's so compelling in the first place. And it will happen until they've created an entirely new stereotype or trope. Hence why you should probably not make another black person with lightning powers or drag comb-overs. It's not a negative stereotype, nor does it have any racist origins by what I can gather. It's just something that people do a lot with black characters for no reason, and sometimes it just feels like black people can't have any other superpower in fiction or any other hairstyle in fiction. And things like lightning powers or dread comb-overs are basically just traits which a lot of characters seem to share right now for seemingly no reason. What is popular to do will change with the times, so it's important for you as a writer to understand what is being done a little too much and try something different. In essence, it's a way to show you care about what you write, and you're willing to do more than just repeat what other people are saying or doing. And if you, as a writer, are so afraid of involving your own unique perspective and ideas on black characters, then it's time for some introspection. Why are you so afraid of writing outside the tropes? I mean, it's not like the act of writing a black person into your setting means you must also make a public statement about racism or black culture... Oh, shit. While cultural accuracy and representation can be important if you make it the focus of your story, I would also argue that it's not always important. Who the fuck cares how many black people existed or not in ancient Greece if my version of ancient Greece is not meant to be historically accurate? It's just the setting. Heck, it might not even be Greece in the first place, but just a setting which takes a lot of Greek inspiration. This kind of brings me to my next point about why you apparently suck at writing black people. I've noticed there is a standard of accuracy and quality surrounding black characters which is not really applied to white characters in the same way. And this sort of thing is enforced on both sides of the political spectrum for different reasons. One side will say that a black character should not exist because it's not historically accurate, or that the original telling of the story did not involve black people. Meanwhile, another side might tell you that your depiction of black people fell short because it did not address the topics they wanted to see addressed, or that you simply did not go far enough in representing black people. Both groups will tell you that a black character in your story is bad because it lacks accuracy, and sometimes this is a valid critique. And if I'm to reveal my own personal bias, I would say that one side is definitely more correct than the other, but that neither is hitting at the core of the issue. For example, I can think of plenty of media which get the traditionally white cultures and mythologies like Greek or Roman mythology incorrect, but no one bats an eye. Mainly because even white people themselves do not fully know the historical accuracy and mythologies of supposedly white cultures. And that's because most white people are neither Greek, nor Italian, nor historians or theologians. And just as every white person would not be able to tell you that Achilles is a gay man with a gay lover, or that Pan and Dionysus are probably the same god, I doubt every black person is a theologian on African mythology, especially since not every black person is African. Some people are about as African as I am Italian, which is to say that we were born somewhere else, 
but we absorb the culture from our parents or grandparents. And yet no one complains when Roman mythology is incorrect or inaccurately depicted in media because no one cares that much nor holds it to that standard. And yet because no one holds it to that standard, those types of mythologies also get a lot more representation and stories written about them. And just as we can recognize that not all white people are Italian, British, or Irish, I don't think we do the same for black people in the many different cultures which exist in Africa as well as outside of it. Expecting black people to be authorities on all things African is just silly. And gatekeeping African mythology or culture behind the argument of being historically accurate also means that we are ultimately going to see less of it in media. Maybe I won't learn anything accurate about African mythology from the story you write, but it might get me interested in African mythology. It might get young children to learn more about these cultures and create something more accurate in the future. Other writers might learn something new or get some inspiration. As writers, our inspirations can inspire other writers. Even if the things we might take away might not be a one-to-one -one depiction of what has inspired us, it still builds a familiarity in the audiences who consume it. But I'm not here to make false equivalencies either. I recognize that black culture has also historically been warped and whitewashed to the point that the only way we can know for sure if a writer had good intentions in their portrayal of black culture is that it is accurate and well-researched. Because oftentimes, writers will depict a whitewashed version of black people and black culture and give their audience the false impression that this is the authentic experience. All the while being as authentic as Taco Bell or Olive Garden. Would I eat at Olive Garden and enjoy the food? Probably. Would I eat at Olive Garden to enjoy good Italian food? On my grandmother's grave you cannot beat me enough to make me call that slop Italian food. There is nothing worse than a writer who thinks they know better than the people they aim to represent, especially when they try to claim that their representation is authentic when it's not. If you aim to write a story which is inspired by black cultures, then make sure it's clear that it's just inspiration. Don't ever present an inaccurate depiction as something that it's not. Sometimes writers who are well-meaning and have good intentions will misunderstand the culture in an effort to portray black people in an overly positive light. Oftentimes they run into the same issues they would when writing female characters or gay characters. That is to say that these characters are not allowed to have flaws in their stories, and they are meant to be mouthpieces for authors' beliefs rather than honest and true depictions of human beings. And this can be a pitfall for any writer, not just non-black writers. While some may agree or disagree with the author's personal beliefs, we can all agree that it would just be better for the author to make a compelling character instead. But standing atop a soapbox and telling everyone, just write a good character while ignoring the race, gender, and sexual orientation of that character is just missing the forest for the trees. If it were that easy, I don't think I would be making this video in the first place. Ignoring the race, orientation, or gender of a character is like ignoring a hammer when building a house. You're just making it harder on yourself because you're too afraid of smashing your thumb with a hammer. Race is just one aspect of a character, but it is an important tool for making a compelling character nonetheless. We can certainly ignore it when making a character. We can have black characters who are not culturally black. We can have black characters who exist outside the socio-political issues of our modern day. We can find reasons to involve black characters in our stories, and for those reasons to not affect the quality of the stories or detract in any way. And perhaps certain audience members can allow black characters to just exist in our media without throwing a tantrum about forced diversity. This brings me to my next point about how to write black people. Chances are, you're probably doing just fine writing your black characters. Perhaps you're not all that good at making compelling characters in general, or perhaps you're just simply good enough when it comes to writing. However, as anyone who has written a diverse cast in their story might be able to tell you, doing so will inevitably bring a wave of entitled nitpicking jackasses to your story, the likes of which you will have to defend yourself from one way or another. These people are the same people who would proudly proclaim that they do not need a character to look like them in order to be attached to a character, only to shit their pants the moment they see a black character in anime. These people will see forced diversity everywhere they look and make it their main mission to seek out the woke politics which is ruining their media in the culture war.
Because I guess when you draw black background characters in a show like Invincible, you know there's going to be a lot of these same people dragging up the comics and saying, See? All the Viltrumites in this panel were white! As if any normal human being would think that changing skin color of a background character has any bearing on the quality of a story. If a character being black on the screen makes you uncomfortable enough to start nitpicking the rest of their character or the story as a whole, then I would seriously question why that is. Why are you pressed if a character's race is changed when it, you might also claim proudly that a character's race is meaningless to you? Which one is it? Does skin color matter or not? Or is it the perceived woke politics that's the real problem? You don't have any problems with seeing black people, right? It's just that whenever you see a black person in media, you immediately think that the only reason a writer might have to make a character black is because they've fallen victim to some sort of political agenda. You're definitely not using that as an excuse to justify and avoid that small part of you which is uncomfortable with people of a different race. In fact, you're so not racist that you believe the only black people that should be in media are the ones that are well-written because black people deserve nothing less. It's the other people who are constantly concerned about race who are actually racist, right? It's not that Miles Morales is black that you don't think he's Spider-Man, it's just that he's not his own character and is just stealing too much from the rogues gallery of Peter Parker, or, or well, I mean, I guess, I guess Spider-Verse is pretty well-written and Miles Morales is his own character there, but look, you, you, look what they did to Peter Parker. I mean, like, they're feminizing the white man. Peter B. is just a bumbling idiot so that Miles Morales can look good. They've got an agenda they're pushing very clearly. A black and pregnant spider woman? It's just wokeism. It's ruining the movie. And yet when you try to argue that, you always get people looking at you weird. Most people love those movies for some reason. They're cringing at you. Shit, how do we convince people you're not racist for disliking a beloved movie like Spider-Verse? Woke politics is clearly ruining it. You see, if you're a writer, this should be a good lesson to you. It doesn't matter how well written something is, there will always be someone who is uncomfortable with it. Or thinking that you have nefarious intentions with writing too many black people into your story. So the best course of action is to just not listen to those people. Choosing to write a black person in the first place was your mistake in their eyes. And it's a mistake I think we should all keep making because it pisses those people off. And if you're watching this and somehow feel called out by the fictional caricature I'm making fun of, then I'd take a second once again to introspect and ask why you feel called out. Because if you like Spider-Verse and you're not openly making those complaints about the movies, then I'm not talking to you. You can safely be on our side and laugh at the people who are molding about seeing too many black people in media. I'm also not going to pretend like a politicized message can't detract from the quality of a story. But if your only arguments for why you don't like something as good as Spider-Verse is it has forced diversity and woke politics behind it, then maybe you're not racist, but you're definitely uncomfortable with black people. You're just using those perceived politics to justify your own discomfort. Really truly ask yourself whether Spider-Verse is worse off because Spider-Woman is black and pregnant, or that Peter B. Parker was a jaded, over-the-hill Spider-Man who later becomes a dorky father who can't shut up about his kid. Cause to me, that's not politics destroying Peter Parker's character. That's literally the most Peter Parker I've ever seen anyone write Peter Parker. And what do you expect Spider-Woman to do when they get pregnant? Not be Spider-Woman for nine months? If you think that's the case, then perhaps we can also discuss why American companies should grant maternity leave to pregnant mothers as a matter of law rather than charity. Since we all seem to care so much about the safety of fictional superpowered pregnant women for some reason, we might as well care about actual women too. And if we want to talk about the larger scope of Miles Morales, being Spider-Man in a universe where Peter Parker is alive and well, such as in the new games, then we can also talk about how multiple Robins can exist at once, and how there are several human Green Lanterns who coexist, or The Flash, or Venom, or any number of comic book characters where we can simply distinguish them as 
Tim Drake Robin or Flash Thompson Venom instead of trying to say shit like, Flash Thompson isn't Venom, he should stand on his own and have a different name from Eddie Brock Venom. It should not destroy our brains just to refer to Miles Morales as Spider-Man, while still referring to Peter Parker as Spider-Man. Like, it baffles me how we can see Peter Parker's suffering in the main stories that he's in, tell Marvel to give this man a break, and then he finally says, You know what? Miles Morales is doing a great job. I'm gonna take a mental health break for myself. And people just absolutely lose their shit as if Peter Parker is getting replaced or something. Like, if you're a real Spider-Man fan, this is the best case scenario for Peter. Another Spider-Man he can trust to protect New York? Some time off and a well-deserved break from the weight of the world being on his shoulders? That's a happy ending for Spider-Man. But okay. It, what if you think that race is important for a character and you still have an issue? Then perhaps you can acknowledge that race is not always important for every character. For example, it does not matter if a character like Nick Fury is white or black. What matters is that they are Nick Fury, and nothing about Nick Fury's character has ever said that he needs to be a certain race or look a certain way. I can understand the feeling that some people might have, seeing their favorite character changed for a perceived political agenda, or perhaps changing a core aspect of characters in the story because the writer is embarrassed by their current audience and wants to cast a wider net. I still can't get over the fact that the writers of the original Lightning Thief movies made the characters 16 when the whole point of the Percy Jackson series was to fulfill a prophecy when they turned 16. Digressions aside, I don't think it's just white people who get uncomfortable when they see a classically white character turned into a black character. I think for white people it feels like they are being replaced or talked down to and told that their skin color is problematic because it is depicted too much in media. White people are told that they have enough toys to play with and that they should share. Not only that, they're told that the people they share their toys with don't need to share back because they're afraid that the white people will break them. And if that analogy sounds childish, that's because it is. And that's the point. That train of logic is a childish instinct. Fictional characters in media are not our toys to share in the first place. It's the writers who share those characters with you, and it always will be. If they are characters you've created, then you can choose whomever you want to appeal to with those characters. Recognize that there are some people who prey upon that childish part of yourself to get you to fight in their culture war for them, telling you to throw a tantrum at the injustice of seeing black people in media. And the stories you enjoy are still stories you can continue to consume and enjoy. Not every writer cares about your money. And if your dollars are so valuable, then spend them elsewhere. Nothing was taken from you, and you can always find what you want somewhere else. Nothing stays the same forever, even you and the things you enjoy or believe will not stay the same forever. But the fact remains that there will always be something for you to enjoy. And sometimes the best way to find those things that make us happy is to understand that we are in our own way. I also think that there are plenty of black people who feel that race swapping a character sends the wrong message, that they cannot make their own characters, or that characters with their skin color are inherently problematic and cannot be popular unless it is off the backs of a pre-established and popular white character. Changing the race of a character can send the message to black people that the white man has to come down from the heavens and bestow some of their cool characters to the poor black people who cannot make their own. In reality, I think it would just be better if we met a topic like race swapping with indifference. Changing the race of a character deserves neither admonishment nor a pat on the back, so long as the race of the character is not crucial to the character's story or personality then I don't see why anyone should be so distraught or impressed by that change so long as the core of the character remains the same. We don't need to form strong opinions about a race swap. It can just exist, and we can move on from it. I feel like anyone who is afraid of being replaced in media is just insecure. The number of black or white or other races in media is not a game with points or winners, nor are the demographics of our countries. 
Who the hell, aside from racist people, actually give a fuck what the racial demographics of a country are or are going to be in the future? I also think a writer patting themselves on the back for swapping a character's race needs to realize that the bar for representation is currently on the floor if that's what they consider good representation. Frankly, it's as lazy and creatively bankrupt as reactionaries say it is. And while I don't think changing the race of a character should be a massive issue that a large swath of the fanbase turns into their next culture war, I also think writers can do so much better. No, guys, white people are not getting replaced because a character is black now. And if you claim that race doesn't matter that much and that it didn't need to be changed in the first place, then why are you complaining about it? Are you mad that anything has changed about the character at all, or can you just be honest and acknowledge that black people make you uncomfortable and maybe learn to not care as much? Indifference really is everything when it comes to these things, and not the fake indifference where someone says, I don't care, only to write a novella about why it's actually a woke conspiracy that they're seeing so many black characters in Hollywood and, and how it's ruining their media. You know what a normal person does when they see the race of a character change? Oh hey, they're black now. Neat. That's it. That's all there is to it, people. That's indifference. Acknowledge it exists and move on. No more energy spent. We're done here. If it's not clear by now, I believe the biggest issue with writing black characters is often not how well written they are, but that just existing puts them under heavy scrutiny, and I think that's just unfair. My issue isn't with writing black people as much as it is with the audience's reaction and initial apprehension to diverse characters in general. Something as simple as writing a character with a different skin color becomes this complex topic of debate about race and politics and addressing the issues where both extremes of the debate are going to uphold an unrealistic standard of quality for just having a character exist in the first place. I don't think the majority of audience members are racist when they have reactions like that either. I'm not here to stand on a soapbox and tell all the white people that all their concerns and opinions on characters are invalid because they're just racist. However, as a white person myself, I am here to point out that our society, at least American society, has trained us to be uncomfortable with people of a different race. Our media, our schools, and sometimes even our parents and close friends have taught us to fear others and ignore parts of our history which still affect people to this day. The same people who will drone on and on about preserving our history and not forgetting it are also the same people who want black people to forget all about the bad things that happened to their grandparents and great-grandparents and just live a better life and ignore it. And even if that hypocrisy is annoying, I think I understand it because I used to think like that when I was a teenager. We want to believe that the hatred and violence of yesterday has been extinguished. We want to pretend like the concerns and struggles of people today are nothing compared to the ones people had to face before. The idea that our country treats people just as badly as it did before is uncomfortable. We want to pretend it's not true, and we want to believe that some people just complain too much. That the world would be better if everyone was just content with the fact that things aren't as bad as they once were. But progressing a society is like rowing a boat against a stream of a river. If you're not making an effort to move it forward, then you will be carried backward. You know what makes a good apology to someone? It's not about saying, I'm sorry, it's about saying, I'm sorry, how can I make things right? But we always seem to skip that last part. We are constantly, unendingly concerned with bringing back the glory of the past, then we are inevitably limited by our history. I would rather live in a time which is better than any other time that ever existed before it. I want my kids and grandkids to live in a world where I can safely tell them that they don't have it as bad as I did, because that shows progress. I want to read stories which have diverse casts of characters, and also for those stories to be free from political debate. We don't live in those times, but we can in the future. History's sole purpose is to show us how the world can change for better or for worse. History can show us that every struggle we face as human beings is not overcome alone. It can show us the mistakes that others have made, their flaws, their shortcomings, and perhaps what they have not yet tried. However, history can never move us forward. It can never show us something new. It can never tell us 
things we don't already know. Nothing in the past will help us create a better tomorrow because a society which includes and looks after every person on the sole merit of their humanity has never been achieved and never will be if we keep looking backward. But writers can envision worlds which never existed and make people believe in them too. I don't expect this video to change people's minds. I don't expect anything I say to solve racism or do any sort of societal good. I expect a lot of the same arguments I've seen and grown up with in the comment section of this video. I'm not here to stroke my own ego and pretend like telling you what I've learned in writing is somehow helping and spreading awareness. I'm also not here to wag my finger at white people and say I know better or that I am better. I don't, and I'm not. These are my notes. This is what I've learned. This is what I have confronted about myself in an effort to be a better person. An honest look at yourself requires that you do not ignore or make excuses for the worst parts of yourself. It is only through recognizing our shortcomings that we can overcome them. In order to face down our demons, we must first learn to free them, otherwise we live in fear of them breaking out on their own. And as much as I try to bring this topic back to writing, or express how much I dislike the political nature of doing something so simple as writing a black person, I think that illustrates the point of my video. These things should be simple. They should be easy. But we've got people who refuse to make it simple. And we have a history that's muddled and gray and uncomfortable. We still struggle with issues today which are echoes of yesterday. And instead of plugging our ears and pretending we don't hear it, we should instead sit down and listen for a little while. Because the greatest skill a writer can have is not just being able to put words to paper, but that they are able to listen and understand the world they experience in their own unique way. All writers do the same thing. We all put words to paper, but not every writer can show their understanding of the world. Not every writer can get readers to understand their thoughts. These are things which only come with experience. And the best way to get experience is not through talking or arguing about politics. It's about taking action and listening. So take action and start writing.